Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another virtually untelevised game, but I'm bringing it to you, bringing it to you because I care and I know you do. Here between the Jayhawks of Kansas, three and one, two and one. Sorry, two and one. We only won two games. We lost that one game. Versus the Green Wave of Tulane, who are four and zero. Oh. Primarily because of this. A lot of people forget about this. And pr probably rightfully so, because it's been a very long time. But in the late 90s and early aughts, the Tulane Green Wave were a passing machine. 1998, they went 12-0. and They were actually kind of like a proto-Utah, Boise State, TCU. Well, not TCU so much anymore. But the, the quote-unquote the quote -unquote BCS buster, they were the first team to go undefeated in the BCS. They were in the first year of the BCS. Of course, the first year of the BCS was terrible because they messed basically everything up. A number of very good teams, um, primarily Kansas State, who I believe went like 11 or 12 and 1, but uh, got left out because they lost their conference championship game, something that I cannot even fathom this year. By the way, that kick is good. Um, you know, even now, like you lose your conference championship game, but you win every other game. I mean, teams have teams have gone to the national championship. Oklahoma in 2003 did. Ironically, after losing to K State um, in the BCS system, of course, the BCS is dead now, primarily because of things like that and the fact that 1998 Tulane got left out of it for whatever reason. I took the widest possible route to get forward there on the uh, on the option. The running game wasn't working great, and the passing game didn't start out great. So, if we can't do a pass or a run, um, generally there aren't any other offensive options, other than, of course, the fake punt. And uh, that was a real punt there. Hard to do a fake punt from fourth and eight. So, you know what? They're starting to get yards on the ground. Uh, well, I would say that, but they got a holding call that actually brought it back. That's like the first holding call against an AI I've seen in a while. So, you know what? I will take it as the off as the referee there shows holding. So, they decide, you know what? Let's go back to what works, the pass. And uh, it didn't actually work there. Then on third and 13, guess what they're doing again? The pass. You'll notice they line up a lot in formations with no running back. That was a very... Uh, oh, I don't know if I'd say very... Uh, like revolutionary thing back then. By the way, here I just don't call for the fair catch, but uh, so I get hammered. Mistake. But we hold on to the ball, so whatever. That was a revolutionary sort of uh, sort of system back then. Is and back then, you know, in ye olden days of like 13 years ago, not a lot of teams were so pass heavy. In fact, Tulane was kind of an unsung hero. Of, uh, of the kind of modern, I don't know if I'd say spread or air raid or whatever, but you think of uh, you think of the Mike Leach Texas Tech teams. You think of um, other, you know, mid okay, that was a terrible wide receiver reverse there. Never call a wide receiver reverse in NCAA football 2003 because it will never work. Go over the middle here to number one who makes a catch. Probably my player of the game. I don't know who the game designated as the player of the game, but he was making just about every catch he physically could make, which is very good. And uh, then we fumble there, and I should have had some lead up to it, but it was it's just like such a shock. It's like you take a turn and all of a sudden you're in the middle of oncoming traffic and you don't really have time to think about it before it happens. So, uh, a touchdown to Lane on an 83 yard fumble return. And all of a sudden, we were going from having a decent drive and some good stops on defense to uh, being down 10-0. Not good. Not a good way to start the game at all, and a bad way to continue the game is just to go nowhere on offense. Third and three. That that could have actually been a decent play had the the pitch traveled just a wee bit further. And fourth and nine. This is a kind of tense play because you think here that's good blocking by the way, good coverage. So they're going to get good field position, and it would be 17-0 if they could score a touchdown. That's hard to come back from, but they don't. We get the fumble. We get the strip and we are still moving on offense. However, we only have like a minute and 45 seconds left, and I am barely paying attention uh, to the clock. I'm paying attention to the game, obviously, but uh, to the clock, not so much. So what do I do? The obvious thing, which is run the football, and then audible to a pass, uh, and then lose track of time that way. So we've already lost track of the play clock, which is bad. Then you lose track of the game clock. Also, we get called for a holding. So it's first and 25 now. And I run the ball. Uh, because that's what you do, really, when you get a minute and 25 seconds left. So it gets second and 21, incomplete pass, and all of a sudden it's third and 21. Third and 21. But we get the pass there. 
almost a first down, and so on fourth and two, what am I going to do but punt the ball away, obviously? That's what most rational, good coaches would do, would be punt the ball away. Unless, say, there was like a fake punt that was totally over overpowered in the game. I think, honestly, it would surprise more people, because if it were like fourth and three and I actually do a punt, I think somebody would be upset. I don't know who's actually who, who's so invo emotionally invested in these videos that they would say, like, you didn't go for the fake punt? I would be surprised, though. And I watch my own videos, so I think I would be the viewer who would be upset. Again, I go for, like, the long, you know, you hit detour on the root, like, on your Garmin enough. Everybody has a Garmin here. I'm making GPS humor. Um, and it takes you on a weird out-of-bounds route, like, I don't want to travel on the highway route. That's what I did there on that option play. And then here I do the opposite of that, which was like a weird Marcus Allen, except with my quarterback number 13, who is the slowest man in the history of slow quarterbacks. But you know what? He gets upfield. He had like 40 or 50 yards rushing in this game for a pretty, pretty mediocre uh, speed rated a, a quarterback there. He's no uh, Kirk Herbstreet. Kirk Herbstreet was one of the slowest men in football history to ever run an option offense. And you know what? Well, he was a backup his whole career, but that's why people people know about him from college game day. But you can look up, like, he had, like, an 80-yard run where he just very clearly was not the fastest man. There was just good enough blocking. And by the way, good catch there. I should probably talk about the game rather than old Ohio State backup quarterbacks. Uh, but I can talk about old Ohio State backup quarterbacks. I can talk about, um... No, that's the, you know what? That is the only Ohio State backup quarterback I know of, and I'm terribly sorry. I guess I can say whoever isn't starting this weekend for Cardell Jones and TJ, JT Barrett. Is it JT Barrett? Who cares? KU's still got the ball. The C's parts in the middle of the field for number 13. You could have had a man who couldn't walk, basically, score, or get a first down on that play. And we get up to the two-yard line with halfback number 11. So he's got 36 yards on the day. Not terrible. For a, what was, you know, comparably not a great rushing game. And the very, very small number of fans in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome uh, are going wild. And the cheerleaders. It looks like there is more, like, I know it's fake, but it looks like there's more of, like, a crimson and blue crowd than a green wave crowd. By the way, green wave's a great name. I used to get the Tulane, uh, Tulane green wave mixed up with the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, which I, I, I guess makes sense and you know I don't feel bad about that you know Tulsa Tulane all you know they both start with the same three letters uh you know and then a color and then a weather formation I don't know if waves or weather formation but whatever touchdown Tulane uh by the way I totally bit on a play action from a team that has run the ball one time in this game and had it called back on a holding call we had a step there I don't feel like that was triple coverage but you know what we had a step so really zero no coverage if the pass was good enough and it was. So anyway, yeah, no, t Tulsa, I'm sorry, Tulane and Tulsa used to get mixed up. But also, the weird thing is that, like, Tulsa's name is the Golden Hurricanes, even though they're in the middle of Oklahoma, which didn't make sense. Uh, Tulane, obviously, New Orleans is pretty near an ocean, so I totally get that. But, like, why Hurricanes in Oklahoma? I'm going to stray away from mentioning anything else uh, on that topic. Number two makes the catch. Then we're inside. The freshman fumbles the ball at the six. But you know what? It gets picked up. Freshman, that would have been a very bad freshman mistake. We get up to the one yard line, third and one. However, there's another holding. So this, this whole game was basically defined by holding calls and fumbles. So bad, um, bad penalties and bad turnovers. Then I have three blockers here and somehow still get sacked because that's the way that you gotta play the game sometimes. You, see, you gotta make horrible mistakes, and then sometimes you just gotta run with your slow-ass quarterback with 16 yards. I get a man to miss, but he's I'm not fast enough to get away from him after I make a miss. And then you know what? They run the ball. <laughs> Tulane, the, the, you know, the team that doesn't run the ball, they just did. And uh, we get it back, and you know what we do? Sometimes you just get way way too lucky stopped the line there but we do get the first down so hey whatever 152 yard rushing you know, 152 yards rushing for the jayhawks today not bad you look at those tur turnovers two ku turnovers both fumbles one two lane turnover also a fumble even though there was also the punt return fumble which i don't know if that counts as a turnover or not for anyone that's basically just a forward motion so really two turnovers both and now it's three turnovers 
because I guess the ref set a pick for me because I guess that ref actually does have like clipping on him uh, just in, in terms of the game itself so you know what sometimes this let this game be a lesson to you sometimes you can go into a, a situation and be terrible sometimes you can go into a situation and just genuinely deserve to lose and sometimes the world just so works out that somebody messes up worse than you you can mess up so many times and someone can somehow just mess up worse and you end up winning 2017 in the Superdome. Congratulations. We moved to, I believe, 1-3. and three, And I asked to actually pass one of my goals that I said at the beginning of the season in the Maryland video. Is we are now at least 500 non-conference. We are 2-1. and one. We only have one more non-conference game that's Notre Dame at the end of the season. I will see you next week when we travel to Waco, Texas to take on Baylor. Good night.